the Women at Rensselaer, my college experience panel. We're going to get started in just a, a minute or two here as people kind of load on. Uh, you know, feel free to get situated, <laughs> figure out the navigation of everything, and we'll get started soon. If you have any questions during this whole hour, roughly, feel free to send them in the chat and we will do our best to answer them. And if we run out of time or if we want to give you a better answer, we'll also put some emails down in there for you can to email us and we'll elaborate some more. Just wait another minute. I hope everyone's having a great day or morning or evening, wherever you are. I know it's getting cold here up in the East Coast. I'm just going to talk to myself. That's cool. Cassie, I'm having a great day. I have slept through the entire day. It is it is cold here. It's pretty frigid. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely just missed most of my day today. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got to catch up on sleep. Thank you. Me too. It's been, been a hard work week. <laughs> All right. I think we can get started. We're just going to go down the line here and just introduce ourselves, name, major, where you're from, and maybe an activity or two that you're involved in on campus. So I will start. I'm Cassie Smith. I'm a super senior graduating in December, which is in just about a couple of weeks. I am very excited. Studying aeronautical engineering. Uh, and on campus, I am a admissions ambassador, and I'm also in the pep band. Hi, um, I'm Caroline. I am a senior, although right now I'm not taking classes. I'm away on an internship in Philadelphia. Originally, I lived about 20 minutes from campus, not too far. Um, I'm a math business dual major, and on campus, I am a part of Women in Business and UPAC concerts, as well as working. Um, well, I was working when we were on campus, multiple jobs, including the one here at admissions. Guys, so my name is Kate, and I'm a junior biomedical engineering major. And um, right now, I'm a second semester junior because I did um, like our arch semester over the summer, which we'll probably get into um, later on in this webinar. But um, yeah, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and um, just a little what I'm involved in. I'm in the Society of Women of Engineers. I'm also involved in Greek life, and I am involved in undergrad research. Hey guys, I'm Rochelle. I'm a sophomore dual majoring in biological neuroscience and psychological science, and I'm from New Jersey. Some of the things I'm involved in on campus uh, are the ski team and uh, Greek life and some research that I'll get into a little bit more later. Awesome. Thank you guys. So hopefully you can hear me. Is it working? Okay, great. <laughs> We're going to dive right in here and I'll get started and then I'll pass it over to Caroline after I tell you all about my college experience. So I'll see you guys soon. Okay. Okay, so hi everyone. As I said, I'm Cassie. I'm a, a super senior class of 2020 graduating this December, which is very exciting. I study aeronautical engineering and I am from central New Jersey and I forgot to say that earlier. So there you go. But let's just jump right in why I chose RPI. I knew I always wanted to study STEM, whether that was math, physics, or engineering, and I knew that RPI was just the best place for me to be to study any of those. Even if I didn't want to do engineering, I could end up in math or physics and be just as happy. And we also have other programs like business or biology or management that I could have also gone into if STEM did not work out. I really liked the location. I'm a, RPI is about three hours from my hometown, so that's far enough that people can't just visit all the time, but close enough that I can just do it in a day trip. I loved the academic priority feel of campus. Everyone is very driven. I like to say that RPI students are passionate about at least two things. One thing related to their major and one thing completely not. And that's usually their extracurricular activity. I loved how everyone was just excited to be there, excited to be learning and just really passionate. Um, as a, a high school student, I was involved in music and I wanted to be a tour guide on a college campus. So I was looking for different programs and activities that I could do. And then at RPI, I got to do them. I'm part of the pep band and now I get to be a tour guide. And so it was really cool to see that I could do the things I wanted to do. And then finally, the financial aid package was really ideal for my family and they worked with us to make it a great package. And I have some pictures here of me on RPI's campus before I even went to RPI. So these are like five plus years old, <laughs> crazy stuff. But campus looks very similar, I would say. So just a background of aeronautical engineering, which is what my major is. 
aeronautical engineering and aerospace, they kind of have the same overarching principles. We look at <laughs> space or and sometimes water, but just different um, engineering solutions in fluid flows, whether that be on you know, the moon or in water. Um, I was really passionate about the Mars rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, rest in peace to both of them, because they were always on Mars growing up. I was wondering, how did they get there? How can I be a part of that? And I wanted to to help engineer that solution. So I was really passionate about space and of course, Top Gun, Apollo 11, those classic movies <laughs> helped gear me towards becoming an aeronautical engineer at RPI. At my time at RPI, I've taken a bunch of classes and have been a part of a bunch of activities. So I'm just gonna detail out uh, some of these things. Some of my favorite classes have been space vehicle design where I actually got to design a, um, an asteroid rendezvous vehicle of a near-Earth asteroid, which is a cool capstone group project. Uh, Spaceflight mechanics, which is basically orbital mechanics. I learned how to analyze different bodies and that really helped me for my space vehicle design course. Propulsion systems, not just rocket engines, but also aircraft engines and helicopter propellers. Numerical design optimization. This was a cool class because we got to design real systems. One of them was the Tilt-A-Whirl, in amusement parks, I actually got to model what that actually looks like and then see how we could increase it so it goes the fastest possible. <laughs> and then Fluid Dynamics Lab, I took this last spring. It's a really cool lab course for undergraduates where you actually get to work with a wind tunnel and you put in different models and different measuring devices and prove your theories with the experimental data. This semester, I'm finishing up with some elective classes of mechatronics, where I get to do some software and hardware of coding and then see what happens on an actual motor. Uh, Intro to Finite Elements, which is another analysis-based class. And then my last aero class, which is air elasticity and structural vibrations. There's also some other classes we have to take, and those are our humanities, arts, and social sciences. And I've gotten to take some pretty cool ones like art history, um, history of science and technology, where we just talked about the history of like the internet, which is really cool. And this semester, I'm in digital filmmaking as well. On campus, I am part of a LEAP program. This is a leadership club on campus that teaches leadership skills to other organizations, so like low and high ropes courses. And so I've been a part of that organization and we've actually been able to transition to the virtual platform. So we're quite busy <laughs> meeting with other clubs. I'm part of the pep band, as I said, I'm very excited about the pep band. I highly recommend you follow us on Instagram and there's a whole bunch of Instagrams we could give you at RPI pep band. If you're interested, we take anyone. It's, it's super optional and just super fun. I played the sousaphone and I was a manager a couple years back. And then of course I am an admissions ambassador and get to talk to you all about my experience at RPI. While I was at RPI about almost three years ago, I had an awesome co-op experience, which was from January to August in Pasadena, California, interning at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And it was just my dream job. <laughs> it was absolutely awesome. I interviewed and applied through RPI job postings and then interviewed on campus. And then after a couple of phone calls, Skype interviews, I got the job and then moved out there, took the semester off of classes and got to work on the Mars helicopter, which is really cool because it lands in February. So it's a really cool project. Uh, it was the time of my life to be out there and it was really cool. And I got to go back the next summer. So this is last summer. I was a Comet Rendezvous mission design team member. So I looked at how do we design the most efficient vehicle? How do we get there? What does this look like? Cameras, angles, all the details uh, that goes into a mission design. And I also did some other technology studies while I was out there. Uh, so this slide does need some updating <laughs> as the past month or so things have changed, but I spent the past summer working again at JPL, but I teleworked, which is a cool experience to be able to stay home and do it. Uh, but I graduate in December. That is still true. Uh, but I just accepted a full-time job offer from JPL, and I'll be moving out there at the end of January to start in February, working as a full-time engineer in design, integration, and testing of space hardware, just as I wanted. <laughs> so I'm really excited and really thankful for RPI for helping me get there. and. That's basically the spiel about me. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to chat them away and then we'll all come back at the end and answer them. And so now I'm gonna pass it over to Caroline if she could join me back on the page here. We will wait for Caroline. <laughs> she may be having technological difficulty. There you are, okay. Hello, I'm so sorry. 
I'm here. And so, hi guys, like I said, my name is Caroline. I am a math business dual. Um, so why I chose RPI is because obviously of the amazing reputation after you graduate, I really wanted a school that would give me lots of opportunities for jobs and internships um, and RPI was great for that. Plus at the time I was in an ROTC and they have an amazing program there. We actually have all the ROTCs, um, Navy, Army, Marine Corps is part of the Navy and also the Air Force. And so if you're interested in ROTC, literally all of our units are amazing. I would highly recommend. Challenging academics was a big part for me too. In high school, I kind of just skated through. I didn't really have to work to do anything at all. Um, and so I wanted to go somewhere that would actually push me a little bit, challenge me, and RPI has definitely done that. And then lastly, I came into RPI not knowing exactly what I wanted to major in. They have great flexibility in choosing majors and courses um, while you're there. So the um, business math degree is interesting because it's not actually one of the most popular ones to do with like the other ones. So for math, usually a lot of people will dual major in computer science or physics or one of the other sciences and with management, um, a lot of people will just take management um, and then maybe just have a minor of some sort. But I ended up having to take 136 out of 138 credits and I have 20 left, which is nice. Um, the great thing about dual majors is that your humanities and math and science course satisfy for both majors. So basically, um, you have to take a certain number of humanities credits and you don't have to take them twice for each one, which you would have to do for a double major. Um, so most people will choose the dual major over the double major. You also will end up with one diploma that denotes both majors. So mine's will say, was like, um, <laughs> sorry, my roommate just left. Um, it will just say like, I have a degree from the School of Science in Math and Business, um, instead of saying like, I have one diploma in the School of Science and one diploma in the School of Business. For math, um, we have three capstone courses before you graduate in a specific area. You can choose Pure Mathematics, Applied Mathematics, Mathematics of Computation, and Mathematics of Operational Research. Um, I chose Applied Mathematics, so basically I took three classes at the 4000 level, which um, fell into that subject area, and then I also had to take two uh, math classes that fell into a different one as math options. I have one left. And then for management, the capstone there is one internship before graduation, which I'm currently fulfilling now. Um, the minimum is eight weeks uh, and 120 hours total over those eight weeks. Um, I've actually already surpassed that requirement at this point in time, but I'm still interning here until um, the end of the semester. So <clears throat> on campus, like I said, I am part of um, UPAC Concerts and Women Business. UPAC Concerts is really cool. We put on a big show each year um, when, when we are in person. <laughs> We've had Black Bear, AJR. Um, we were supposed to have Bryce Vine in the spring before we shut down. So we've got some pretty popular big names who come and perform for us um, once we get that organized. It's really fun if you're very interested and that kind of thing, you can always join our club um, and be part of that planning process. I'm also part of Women in Business. I am one of the marketing directors because there are two of us this year. And we put on a lot of workshops and events um, talking about things like interviewing. Um, we did a career fair prep event. We have one on financial literacy coming up. So it's a lot of topics that you might not necessarily get an in-depth coverage in class or you might not get like necessarily um, guest lectures, but we try to get people from each specific field or pertaining to each topic who can come and talk about their own experiences and give us a little more insight. In the past, like I said, I was part of Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps or NROTC. That was great. Again, if you guys have any questions about that, I'd love to answer them. Um, it was really great. If you are interested, again, I totally recommend any of our units. I also did intramural sports, which is very popular among most RPI students. It's not a lot of commitment. You basically um, get a team together, you play one game or match a week, and then there's championships. And if you win the championships, you get to win a t-shirt. And I have one. <laughs> and, um, so that's always fun. Who doesn't like free clothes? And then for my jobs, I worked, I do work, sorry, as an admissions ambassador, obviously, as I'm here. Um, I worked at RPI Athletics. I worked with football and hockey games. As you can see, here I am posing with Puckman, um, our hockey mascot. Um, and then I was an RA at my last year when we were on campus. I RA'd for freshman students and that was a really rewarding experience. Oh no.
<laughs> okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> I'm having technical difficulties. Okay. Um, and then Okay, can you guys hear me? No. <laughs> Hello, I don't think anyone can hear me. Okay, there we go, sorry about that. It's still not working. Um, but I, right now I'm interning for Fringe Arts here in Philadelphia. Right now it's all remote, unfortunately, just because of the way of the world and of the nature of the work for Fringe Arts. Basically, they are a live performing contemporary arts venue um, and so my job here is fielding ticketing and membership inquiry calls um, and assisting with front of house operations, as well as coordinating volunteers. We just finished our four week long Fringe Festival, which for the first time was all online rather than having artists who performed um, plays and um, exhibits, experiences, that kind of thing. In person, we did it all online via Zoom, um, Google Meet. So that was interesting. A lot of our patrons are older and have never used those platforms before. So there was definitely a huge learning curve for them. And then actually my internship supervisor was just furloughed. And so um, I've also been kind of branching out into some of the other departments. I've been working with the marketing team. I have been working with venue rentals. So that has definitely been interesting. Um, again, because we're remote, because we're remote, it's just been a different experience. Now I'm gonna pass it off to Kate now. Hi guys, so my name is Kate and I'm a junior biomedical engineering major at RPI and yeah, I'll just be going over my experience so far at RPI. So why I chose RPI? So um, the first thing is it's, it was a perfect size for me. I knew I didn't want to go to a school that was too big, but also not too small. So RPI is a medium-sized university, so it's not perfect in between. Um, I was able to meet um, a lot of different people um, and still have those like close relationships. And not only that, but definitely you get um, closer to faculty and have more access to TAs and um, office hours. So that's definitely a perk of, you know, being a medium sized school. And the second thing is obviously the STEM focus. I knew I wanted to study biomedical engineering when I was in high school and I knew I wanted um, a strong STEM um, program, strong STEM school. So RPI is definitely the, the place to go to get that. I've been more than more than happy with the classes that I've been taking so far. And um, as a junior, you know, I um, am definitely, I definitely don't re regret my decision coming to RPI because I I really feel like I'm gaining um, the exact academic experience that I wanted as a high school student. And the last thing is it's close, but not too close to home. So I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Um, so it's kind of close to the city, but I knew I wanted to be upstate New York um, or just, you know, just a little bit further away from home. Um, I don't want to be too far. So I didn't like want to venture out to like another coast. Um, but yeah, upstate New York is, is really nice. Like, especially in the fall time, we've had a great fall here so far. Um, you can go like apple picking, pumpkin picking, um, and like it, the snow is so fun in the in the, in the winter. Um, a lot of people go skiing, snowboarding nearby. So um, the location is just great, and like downtown Troy is super nice. There's a lot of different restaurants and um, coffee shops, different places that you can go. Um, so it's never a dull moment when you're at RPI. And now I'm just going to go into a little bit more about biomedical engineering and why I chose biomedical engineering as my major. So the formal definition is just it um, closes the gap between engineering and medicine, combining the design and problem solving skills of engineering with medical biological sciences to advance healthcare treatment. So um, as a high school student, I was considering pre-med. Um, but I knew I wanted to be involved in um, in healthcare somehow with met with the medical field, but then I soon realized that I liked my physics and calculus classes better. So that's kind of why I went into the engineering direction. And biomedical engineering really just kind of takes my love for like um, like the medical field, but also engineering problem solving and brings that together. So. Um, it's a really cool major. There's so many cool medical devices coming out for, with and with biomedical engineering. So um, it's a really cool field to be getting into, especially now. 
Um, and I have an interest in specifically like orthopedic medical devices, but I'm not just, you know, limiting myself to that. And we also have a center for biotechnology and interdisciplinary studies at RPI. So that's that picture right there. It's a really nice modern building. Um, you can view it in our virtual tour on our Instagram. Um, and hopefully you can see that one day. It's a really new modern building and a lot of research happens there. And I'm actually involved in research and I'll be going into that later on in a few couple slides. And I also have a concentration in biomechanics. So biomedical engineering is pretty cool. You can um, concentrate um, in, we have different concentrations. So we have five different concentrations. We have biomaterials, biomechanics, bioimaging, instrumentation. Um, we have tissue engineering and also medical devices. So we have some new concentrations actually added this year, but I really like biomechanics, like the more mechanical side of engineering, uh, of biomedical engineering. So um, that's why I chose that concentration. And now I'm gonna be going into just what I'm involved in at RPI, cause that really just makes my, uh, that really is what makes the experience so much, um, so great. So obviously I'm an admissions ambassador. That's why I'm here today. Um, I used to give tours, now I am here through your screen virtually, but it's still fun to share my experience with um, prospective students. And I'm also involved in Greek life, so um, I'm on the executive board of my sorority, and um, it really gave me a great group, a, a great community of women to go to. Um, um, we are involved in like philanthrop philanthrop philanthropic service, and um, we also um, have uh, fun events together and uh, partner with different organizations, whether they're frats or, or frats, other sororities and other cultural organizations. And we do a lot of um, a lot of cool events on campus and we're even doing them now virtually, which is still really awesome. So we still have that connection with everyone on campus. I'm also involved in undergrad research. Um, so I started my um, undergrad research position in January of this year, and I'm gonna be going into that a little bit more in the next slide. Um, and I'm very involved in the Society of Women Engineers. I knew I wanted to join even before I came to RPI. It's um, it's an organization. Um, it's not just limited to women engineers. You um, don't have to be a female to go to, to um, join the organization. Um, but it's a great club to join if you want that professional development help, but also you want to meet um, other women um, or men studying STEM. Um, so it's been a great experience so far. I've been on the executive board since my freshman year, and I plan to continue to be involved in it. Um, even past my college career. So it's definitely um, opened a lot of doors for me. And I was also involved in um, some dance activities. So I um, tried out dance club. I was on dance team for a bit um, since I did dance in high school. So um, that was really fun. Um, now um, dance team isn't, um, isn't performing um, because of COVID, but um, hopefully will be soon. And now just for my um, professional experience, which is um, my undergrad research. So um, I'm involved in an innovative medical devices laboratory at RPI through the BME department, the biomedical engineering department. So I started my research my second semester of sophomore year, and we work on smart orthopedic implants. So right now I'm working on a project that's supposed to diagnose and monitor acute compartment syndrome. And I do a lot of mechanical work. Um, so kind of, again, my my interest lies in more of the mechanical side of engineering. Um, so the research focuses on orthopedic biomechanics and medical device design. So it's really opened my eyes to how medical devices are made and the process that goes behind, um, you know, different research and development that goes into medical devices, which is really cool. And my lab um, actually um, partners with um, uh, big BME companies like Smith and & Nephew and Stryker. So um, it's definitely opened a lot of doors for me, um, which I really appreciate. And you can get involved in research as soon as your second semester freshman year. And um, this is just like a screenshot from um, a WebEx meeting that we had um, since now. I do my research remotely um, since um, undergrads can't go into lab, but I'm still able to do my research remotely since I do a lot of computer-aided design. Um, but yeah, I work with a lot of different um, individuals from all different backgrounds, mechanical engineering, biomedical engineering, electrical engineering. Um, the research that you can get involved in can overlap with different departments. So that's what's really cool about RPI. You're not limited at all in what you can um, get into if, if you're interested in research. So, um, and that was definitely a big push for me to go to a, re a research incentive um, school. So um, definitely, um, uh, definitely, if you're at all interested in, in research, um, RPI is the place for you. And now for my future plans. So I'm currently um, doing my fall semester. Um, this is my second semester of my junior year because 
I did a I did the art semester of the summer, which is um, basically you take your first semester of junior year over the summer and you pick either the fall or spring away to do a co-op internship research or um, any kind of experience like that. So I'm planning to um, do a co-op in the spring. I've actually been um, getting um, getting some word back. I, I got an offer recently. So um, an RPI has definitely really helped me with that. So I'm kind of just in the process of considering where I'll be working in the spring. And um, our career development center is really, really helpful with, um, you know, checking your resume and making sure that you're ready for that kind of stuff. And I'm considering getting a master's. I'm considering getting a master's in um, mechanical engineering. So um, I'm thinking about doing a co-term at RPI, um, which is basically just staying an extra year at RPI and getting your master's. Um, and it's great because your financial aid carries over. So um, that's why I'm, I'm really considering that. And yeah, hopefully I can work then full time as a biomedical engineer in the future. And um, yeah, that was pretty much my experience at RPI and I'll pass it on to um, Rochelle. Hey guys, I'm Rochelle. I'm a sophomore dual majoring, oops, sorry, <laughs> dual majoring in biological neuroscience and psychological science. So why RPI? The first thing that really struck me was all the research opportunities. Like Kate um, touched on, you can really get involved with any department and I really liked how you could focus on something that was out of your major or collaborate with other majors. So I thought that was really cool. And to see PhD students working with undergrads and professors. And obviously RBI is a STEM focused school, which I thought was really cool because it would prepare you for the outside world and the location. I live in North New Jersey, so it's a 2.5 hour drive from home, but also it's so easy to get home with the Amtrak in Albany, just a 15 minute ride from campus. And just RPI is a 10 minute walk to downtown Troy and we have awesome cafes to get coffee and smoothies like little packs and different things to do like Troy's night out. And we have an amazing farmer's market every Saturday that's four streets long. So some of the things that I really liked at RPI. So just a little bit about my majors. I, um, I was always really interested in neuroscience, especially when I took AP Psychology my senior year. And um, right off the bat, I thought psychological science was a really cool major because not only does it obviously have that psycho psychology aspect, RPI tries to implement other things that you might need for future careers. So like requirements are um, computer science and statistics courses, which really help you prepare to just get outside of that you know, liberal arts college where you might be more on the art side of it, where RPI would focus science-wise. And um, some of the courses overlap and RPI does a really great job of making templates for you to make sure that you graduate with, those, with that dual major. So this past summer, I was fortunate to get an internship at a financial technology company at Equiland, although remotely. And because of all the courses that RPI uh, has you take for your majors, I took some research courses and had that data analysis background. So I, I created a script within Python to extract tweets from Twitter's API. And it was really cool just to get an internship by freshman year. And RPI's Career Center really does an awesome job looking at your resumes and helping you out with anything you might need like with that. So on campus, I'm involved in undergraduate research within the cognitive science department. I'm in CogWorks, which tries to monitor behavioral patterns from subjects playing Tetris. And uh, they implemented their own like Tetris version of the game. And so we look at eye data and the keyboard data. And I'm also part of the Alzheimer's Prevention Research Project. And we're doing some really cool things like looking at how uh, your smell might be affected with early onset Alzheimer's disease. I'm also part of the ski team where we actually race. So during the spring semester, most weekends were spent on mountains and RPI is just a great location because, um, you know, upstate New York, there's so many different skiing areas. So, and if you're not into competing, we also have a ski club. So I definitely recommend checking that out. 
I'm also part of the Food Recovery Network, where we donate leftover dining hall food to a homeless shelter in downtown Troy. And um, I'm a member of a sorority in Greek life. So for resources for your first year experience, obviously going to a new school from home is very daunting, but RPI really has so many resources available for you. For each major, even if you have one, you have a faculty advisor and an advisor for every school that you're part of. So I'm part of the Humanities, Arts and Sciences School, and I'm also part of the School of Science. So I have two hub advisors and two faculty advisors. We have mentors for calculus, physics, chemistry. We have an RA, LA, tutoring and counseling centers. So you definitely don't have to be afraid of that. And um, if you guys have any questions, then we'll love to, we'd love to answer them. Cassie, I think you're on mute. <laughs> it wouldn't be a day when you're not on mute, you know? But um, thank you to everyone for sharing your, your stories and your experience at RPI. So we're opening up to questions now. Um, feel free just to uh, type them in and then we'll go down the line. You can direct a question to any particular person or just uh, in general. Oh gosh, things are popping up. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's get started. I think the first question is from Holly. Are there a lot of engineering internships or are they difficult to come across? Maybe we could pass it to Kate as she is kind of engineering internship searching searching right now as we speak. Yeah, I can I can add on to that. So um, even if, I mean, it's definitely uh, been a difficult year, um, you know, job searching, but um, I still see that employers are still looking for RPI students. And, um, you know, whenever I've been applying to internships and I've been interviewing, um, you know, the companies know RPI and know, um, that the students there, um, that our students here are well prepared and with um, with um, the majors that we're in and everything with the faculty that we that we have. So um, it's definitely you know having RPI as um, being at RPI definitely prepares you um, for uh, for like industry or if you know whether or not you want to uh, go to grad school, PhD school. But um, I would definitely say that it's um, it's not difficult to come across engineering internships and um, it's. Um, I've, I've been getting, I, even with the pandemic and trying to look for uh, spring co-ops, I've been still been seeing a lot of prospects. So um, it's, it, hasn't been, um, it hasn't been as difficult as, as I thought it would be. We also have an RPI um, organization called the CCPD, which is the Center for Career and Professional Development, whose sole job is to help RPI students get jobs, internships, co-ops, help them get into grad school if that's where you want to go. So that they're a great resource for any internship postings, any resume reviews, anything like that as well. I think the next question is for me. <laughs> Thanks, Holly, <laughs> about being an aerospace engineering major and what the environment is like. I assume you mean in terms of being a female in the aerospace engineering environment, and you can correct me if that assumption is incorrect. Um, just let me know and I can answer it again. But I came from a public high school where when I took physics, um, AP physics, my senior year, there were 16 people in the class and four were girls. And that was a 25% ratio. I had a male teacher. I basically male dominated in all my classes. And then I came to RPI and it actually got a little bit better. <laughs> if you if you would believe we have closer to a 33% to like 67% ratio of female to male on campus. But I would say I didn't really notice it. Right. I had my my group of girlfriends who are also arrows and then my group of guys who are also arrows. Maybe there's a little bit more guys in that group, but I still had my female friends. OK, I think Caroline is still here. If you have questions for her, her Internet is just having issues, but she can help out. Um, but again, I haven't noticed anything drastic, any any real issues that I've experienced. I don't know if someone else wants to tag on to that about their experience being a female at RPI.
Yeah, so I really, um, especially with my year, it um, RPI has tried to like balance out more of the ratio to female females to males, but honestly, it for me personally, um, it hasn't been like terribly noticeable. Um, in a lot of the classes I'm taking, it's very well balanced, and professors try to make it that everyone obviously has an equal opportunity to give their opinions. Yeah, I I would agree with that. Um, and actually, as a biomedical engineering major, um, we actually have a lot of women in the program. Um, which we actually I actually have like in some of my classes, I have more um, more girls than men. So, uh, but it definitely varies varies with um, major. Um, I think you know aerospace and nuclear engineering is um, definitely a bit different, but. Um, um, even despite that, um, there's still so many resources and clubs that you can join. Like personally for me, I am in SWE, the Society of Women Engineers. Um, that's a great club to join um, to, you know, meet more women on campus. Or we also have the Women's Mentoring Program where uh, you get assigned a, men a, a, woman, a female mentor and um, they kind of, you know, help you with, with navigating RPI and then you can also yourself have a mentee. So there's a lot of different um, resources like that at RPI that will um, help you get connected with other wo uh, women on campus. And personally, I also, um, I haven't noticed the ratio at all that much and it's definitely, it's definitely getting a lot better. RPI is taking in more girls year by year. So um, yeah, definitely not as noticeable. I think our next question is for Rochelle. Yeah, so my favorite part about majoring in biological neuroscience is honestly just the selection of classes. It really is, a, I mean, obviously focused with uh, biology and cell bio, but with also an emphasis on chemistry. And so it's really an, a great way to get lab skills, but just kind of venture out into different fields. Like you have to take physics classes, bio, you know, chemistry. So it, it definitely prepares you for any job that you might want or, or in research um, and all the research opportunities that come with it. I think we can direct our next question about what is everyday slash the social life like maybe to Caroline, if she's still on, she can get us started. Yes, hello. So everyday social life, um, well, I, oh, those are like two. Well, okay, so social life is, um, it's basically like what you make of it. If you're someone who's kind of like an introvert and you only like maybe hang out with like one or two people, uh, that's fine because you'll find people like that. And if you're someone who likes to just hang out in like a giant group all the time, you're also going to find people like that. It's really what you make of it. Um, and then everyday life is, you know, you wake up. For me, I'm not going to lie, I wake up as close to class time as possible. Um, and then depending on how you do your schedule, because based on what classes you're taking, how many sessions you have, you can be pretty flexible with your schedule. Um, you'll definitely have a few classes. I think I got away one semester with having classes like two days a week, um, with just the way that I schedule it, which was really nice. And then we have our dining halls. As a freshman, you'll be required to have a meal plan. So you'll meet all sorts of people there. You can meet up with your friends. Um, I used to like text everyone as I was getting close to getting off class, be like, hey, who wants to meet for lunch, like at Sage Dining Hall? Um, and then in the evenings, a lot of the time you'll be doing homework or studying, but you'll be able to do that again, like with people you know, um, kids in your classes, your friends, even if you're in different majors. I mean, I know Cassie and I are in completely different majors. We took a class together um, and we worked on homeworks together. So you, you're definitely going to get to meet all sorts of different types of people and it's be really nice. I'd like to add that every weekend and really every night, there's always some type of event happening for any different club, professional organization, or just a, a sporting event. There's always something to do if you need something to do or want to do something. Uh, we have we poster around campus. It's something that I actually loved about campus when I visited. So uh, just imagine this. <laughs> You're walking around RPI's campus and there's just posters everywhere, different colors, different shapes, different sizes, advertising different events. And it's how we communicate of, oh, there's an improv show this Friday night. And like, I'll take a picture of the flyer and send it to my friends like, we're going. Or, oh, there's a big hockey game. This Saturday night, I'm going to go buy tickets. So it's how we kind of communicate and spread the word. So there's always something happening if, if you're interested and want to go to that stuff. Yeah, I 
I just wanted to add on, um, like kind of what I was talking about earlier when I, you know, presented my experience. Um, so like the size of the school, I think is what makes the social life for me great. I think I've just made really like very, very close friendships with people just be merely because of the size of the school. I feel like if I were to go to a bigger school, I would, you know, feel a little bit lost um, because it's just you, it's like overwhelming when there's, personally, that's kind of for me, it just depends on, you know, what you're looking for. But I think, you know, with the size of the school, I've been able to, um, I'm still so close with the friends that I made from freshman year, but I've also, every single year, I make new friendships too. And um, that's what I really enjoy about RPI. And I know that, um, get it, like, leaving leaving RPI, I will still have these um, close bonds and, um, and friendships. And um, it's also just like um, RPI is just a very collaborative environment. We're all just, you know, here for each other, supporting each other. So um, and you can really, really s sense that as soon as you get here. So um, that's probably one of my favorite parts of RPI and just like the people that I've met here, um, which honestly makes the social life great. Okay, next question, because we have, we've got a lot, which is great, keep them coming. Is it difficult to get into research projects? Let's also open that up to maybe how you got involved in your research to Kate and Rochelle. Either of you. <laughs> so um, the way I got involved was actually just by going up to professors out their class and being like, hey, do you guys know of any openings? And it was really that simple, honestly. And if they didn't, they would direct me to other professors or TAs that had those openings. And I was able to just find out. Um, also in the cognitive science department, I'm sure other departments do this. We have weekly meetings where you can, um, you know, have master's students, PhD students and professors present their topics. And sometimes they'll ask for undergrad students to come and join. So it's just like a really easy way. And you can also find openings online. Um. Um, yeah, and just to add on, um, research projects, yeah, are super easy to um, get into. It's just, you know, about taking that initiative and just reaching out. So what I did, um, I kind of took some time um, freshman year, the beginning of sophomore year, to really see where my interests lie. Um, so I saw that I was more interested in biomechanics, um, you know, more of the mechanical side of biomedical engineering. And then I reached out to a professor. I looked on um, on the biomedical engineering um, department website, and I just saw, you know, some of the research that's going on. There's, you know, email addresses everywhere that you can, um, you can just get contact information for professors. And I just reached out and, um, you know, talked to the professor. And then um, a few weeks later, I was in the lab. So um, it's very, uh, very, you just have to take that initiative and, you know, just reach out, see what you're interested in. And um, it's almost as if like you're interviewing for, um, you know, an internship because you, um, you know, they, it's kind of like they are adding you to the team. So, um, you know, you want to treat it pro definitely with like professionally, but um, if you just show that you're super enthusiastic about the research, um, that will definitely, you know, um, the, like the, prof the professor that um, you want to work with will definitely be able to see that. Awesome. So this is kind of a fun question. How far away are your classes from each other and from your dorm? So, anyone? Oh, I could take Thanks, Sarah. If I show up. Okay. So, my freshman year, I chose this dorm called North Hall. And honest to God, it was literally right across the street from academic campus, academic campus which was really nice um, because, as I said, I like to get to class, like, right right when it's time to be there and so i would literally wake up for a 10 a.m class about 9 45 roll out of bed get dressed and walk over to class so that was pretty nice um a lot of people will end up living on freshman hill it's 10 freshman dorms all like in this one area of campus and so that is probably like i would say it's like a five minute walk if that to like the main part of campus all the academic buildings are super close and you get about 10 minutes in between each like class block um and that's plenty of time to get from class to class and i even had classes like um i had a class one time at the armory which is like the where the gym is at and i had to walk all the way down to the business school which is quite a walk and i made it in like the amount of time that i had so it's definitely not a problem getting like from your dorm to classes or from class to class 
Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's all located if you ever get to visit campus or, you know, pull up a map of campus. We have like our academic side, but then there's a road that kind of cuts through campus and there's a bridge over it. That's the only bridge on campus. We call it the bridge or the footbridge, or the bridge, that's where you go. And on the other side is kind of the residential living side with our student union, our student um, recreational gym, and some of the dorms over there as well. It's all pretty close. It has to be pretty close because sometimes it gets very cold and you're kind of like speed walking, <laughs> but you make it there and it's good. What do you like to do outside of class slash what are popular things to do? Maybe we can all answer this to our own favorite things to do on the weekends or evenings when you have some free time. So let's start with Rochelle. All right. So my one of my absolute favorite things to do is on Saturdays, um, walk into downtown Troy and go to the farmer's market. Like I mentioned before, it's literally like four streets long and it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> so I like to, uh, even if it's cold out, we they have the market indoors, so that's fun to do. Um, but when I'm not doing that, I, I like to just get together with friends to study, um, go to the gym together. And like I said, I'm on the ski team, so I, I'll do that when we have practice or go to races on weekends, just things like that, you know, making studying fun by getting together with people. And there's always activities on campus, like Cassie mentioned. So. I always love to study with my friends in our student union. I, that's my favorite building on campus. It's always popping. You can walk through and there's at least one table of people you know, and you can sit down and be like, can I complain about this? Or can I just sit down and eat? Or let's let's study, you know? Some of my Aero friends be like, we got the Aero table going for the whole day. And we're just gonna sit here and work on problems all day long. Uh, so that's what I usually do during the day and during the week and have to study. But on the weekends such the evenings, Part of the pep band is playing for our D1s ice hockey for men and women. So I get to go to all those games. It's like really exciting stuff. They're just so much fun. Love to play some music. You know, we root for the team and then, you know, just get to be around people who are, have the same interests as me. We also play for the football team and then some random events like marathons, walkathons. We've played at alumni <laughs> events, homecoming. So we're all over the place. Kate, do you want to? <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I just didn't know if I, if like I was the next one. On. <laughs> um, so kind of um, like uh, Rochelle was saying, I love downtown Troy. Um, it's probably one of my favorite things to do outside of class. Just, you know, get off campus and um, like there's so many cool spots to go to. Um, really cool co coffee shops. Um, I love the student union, um, but also sometimes like, I want to get off campus and you can always like study somewhere else. So that's fun that we have um, the downtown area to kind of venture out to and um, ex like experience that. I also really like going hiking. There's a lot of nice hiking trails um, next to RPI, um, and I'm not I'm not a big skier. Um, I wish I could um, be good at skiing, but I don't. Uh, but I'm not. <laughs> but I know a lot of people go skiing um, during the winter time, and there's just always things to do. I think the area around um, offers that nice. You know, we have that downtown area, but then there's also a lot of cool nature around and um, a lot of places that you can visit and. Um, I love the fall in our, at RPI, like the fall upstate is just great. Like the leaves changing and you can just, like I went apple picking um, earlier this month and it was super fun. So there's just always things to do. Um, for me, like Cassie, I roll up to the football hockey games cause I work there and I, I do love them. I actually come back, went to the hockey games before I was an RPI student. So uh, I got really familiar with everything there. And so I love going. Um, during the week, I do not do much. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I did talk about how RPI was challenging for me, and it is very challenging. I spend most of the weeks, um, weeknights, doing homework and stuff. Again, like sometimes I'll try to meet up with people for meals um, and go to my club meetings, but most of my social life does happen for me personally on the weekends because that's just how I plan um, to do things. I'd rather be working like full on through the week and then having a day, day and a half to, to do just relax before the next week. Um, one of my favorite things to do is actually I love live music and so I go to a lot of concerts. We have some great concert venues just right here in the area. We have the Times Union Center, which is gonna host a lot of those bigger names. Um, we've had Billy Joel, Ed Sheeran, um, 
I mean, there's so many, I honestly, like, I could just name so many. We, It's all, like, the big names. I've been to so many concerts there. We have um, Upstate Concert Hall. They're smaller, so we're going to have, like, smaller acts there, maybe ones that most people might not know or, like, a few people might know. Um, I was actually supposed to see Hot Shell Ray there before COVID happened. And um, we also have SPAC, which is an outdoor amphitheater. They are mostly seasonal, so by the time you come to RPI, there's only, like, a month left of programming there. Um, but if you do end up going to a show there, it's really cool. They're one of the best, um, like, acoustically sound amphitheaters, like, in the United States. So that's a really fun experience. And then a lot of the other big name venues are not far of a drive away. Like, we're in a really good position where it's not, like, a huge city, but there's a lot of stuff around where you can travel to if you have a car or, like, if you want to take a bus um, and stay overnight or something like that. Awesome. So our next question is, why or how did you end up choosing RPI over other tech schools? I did not apply to any other tech schools, so hopefully someone else did and can answer this question better. I applied to other tech schools. I actually wanted to be a computer science major before I got here. Um, and so I think for me, again, like just the, um, the reputation that RPI has once you graduate for me, it was just really like, I, again, like I'm always looking to the future for myself and knowing that RPI could open doors for me um, with, in the future was definitely a big choice for me. Not to mention um, when I visited RPI, it was immediately like, I remember I turned to my parents and I was like, this is, this is it. Like, this is the one for me. Like um, we did accepted students day and we got to talk to a bunch of different students who already, um, went there were the students that I would be coming into the school in the fall with. And it was like, I would just talk to them. I had a lot in common with them. It was like, um, we had the same interests. We watched the same like TV shows. Even if you think that something you like is super obscure, there's someone here who definitely like has heard of it, like really likes it, like we'll talk about you with it. So that for me was definitely like, I was like, I'm, I'm home mom, like see you later. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that, that was it for me. Anyone want to add anything? Oh, dear. I also, uh, RPI was the only tech school I applied to. I actually didn't think I would end up at engineering school, but literally when I uh, came on campus on acceptance students day for the first place, I also was like, this is the school for me, just the atmosphere. And I really hope you guys get to actually visit campus so you can, can you, you guys can experience that for yourselves too. But just, I, I really felt that at home and I still do. I think I cut out, but I am back now. <laughs> Don't know what happened. Here's a question from Sydney about, does RPI offer an undecided engineering program? Yes, we have an undeclared engineering program. Did anyone start in it that I didn't know about? No, okay. Um, so Sorry, I started undeclared science, which is, um, I will say not a lot of students start undeclared. It was very weird for me and I definitely like, you shouldn't feel discouraged by that because I really think that like RPI is a great place to kind of decide what you want to do and how, like and that you can take so many different electives during your first semester to just kind of get your bearings and figure out what you want to do. I didn't even pick up my dual major until the end of my sophomore year. So you have plenty of time to decide what you want to do um, and basically the undeclared like disciplines you will take the basic ones that the classes that would cover for like all of the ones so for me I ended up taking Calc 1, Intro to Biology. I took one of my humanities, because like I said, everyone is supposed to take those. Um, and so you'll take a bunch of those and then you'll have some freedom to take some of the other like classes and what you're interested in. So I also took computer science one. Um, and so it, there, like I said, there's a lot of freedom, there's a lot of flexibility and it's a really great place to kind of decide what you want to do. For the undeclared engineering program, there's a uh, a one credit class that you take when you're undeclared and it walks you through like a seminar course and you get walked through the 11 different disciplines of engineering that RPI offers. So you can learn a little bit about chemical, a little bit about biomedical, nuclear engineering, mechanical, and kind of learn your interests from there. Well, you're also taking your calculus, physics, chemistry, um, biology, the courses that you need to take anyway. So you're not 
you're wasting time. You're not going to be behind or anything. They really help you prep to decide what you want to do. By around, I'd say like mid to mid sophomore year, you do have to decide if you want to be on track, which again, who, who knows? I'm not on track, so it's okay. <laughs> you know, you, you get there when you get there. Um, we have just a few more minutes left here. So if you have any burning questions, put them in the chat and we will answer them. But how long is each class on average? I'm going to pass this to Kate as I look at the other questions. Yeah, so usually our classes are um, around like almost two hours. Um, there are some classes that are two hours and some classes are um, 45 minutes. Um, it just depends. Sometimes you'll have them, um, the classes that are shorter, you're going to have them more often during the week. So, um, and also your freshman year, you take, um, so if you're in like chemistry, you have labs. So labs are definitely on the on longer side. They're around, I I was a freshman a long it feels like a long time ago already but it was around like with with um uh we had like a mentoring class before so we had some help on like um solving problems and um uh, solving class problems so I had a class um before right before lab so in total it was like three hours of chemistry so um that was definitely a lot freshman year but um it by the time you're um like a junior senior um your classes are definitely a lot more um spread out you have a lot more leniency with you know how you make your schedule um it because you kind of get first first pick on on classes because um that's how our scheduling works um but yeah they're definitely um the longest classes are um almost two hours and then another quick question here what are the average class sizes I have this, I think I have the updated statistics, if that's correct here. I believe 80% of our classes have less than like 30 to 40 people in them, something like that. Um, the the intro classes, as Kate was talking about, you know, some of them are longer labs and they do have more people in them just because everyone has to take chemistry. Everyone has to take calculus. It's one of the requirements of being, you know, a technology school is, you know, you have to take calculus. Um, I would say, for context, maybe our, our lecture hall building, we have about seven lecture hall rooms in there with the largest one seating 508 people. I've had many classes in there that have never had 508 people in them, maybe 150, right? But the best advice I can give wherever you go to school is sit in the first two rows because then you won't fall asleep. The professor will know you. They'll know your name and they'll know that you're paying attention. And when you ask a question, people's heads don't have to turn around and be like, who asked that? You can just ask the question and the professor will look right at you. So I highly recommend it wherever you go to school, you'll probably have a lecture-based class at some point with more people than maybe you'd, you'd be comfortable with or that you're used to, but there are ways to, to make it feel much smaller and much closer. wanted to add on so with the arch program um you get um a lot smaller classes which is one of the perks of um the arch program so um even though so this this past summer it was it was still definitely a hard summer it was just it was the first time you know taking all online classes but um i still was able to get really close with the um students in my classes like we all kept like really tight-knit group chats and um i talked to um like my TAs and got I talked to my TAs more than ever before than in like previous semesters just because they like all knew our names because their classes were just so much smaller and um that so that's definitely a perk of the of the arch program you just get a lot closer with your class um class year and you get a much a much smaller class size than usual throughout the year um so and e even despite um having um, online classes, I was still able to, um, you know, get help from my TAs um, and get help from my professors and also get closer with my classmates. Awesome. Thank you all for attending our webinar today and asking questions. We love answering questions. That's what we do. So if we did not get to your question or if you didn't get a chance to type it in there, there's not a problem there. Uh, Teresa just sent a couple email addresses in the chat that you can just send a quick email to. The first one is for uh, the actual admissions counselors and the admissions staff. But if you want to talk to a student, which would be one of us or one of our peers, 
um, and they can, you know, be directed based on your major or your hometown, whatever preferences you know you want to talk to someone, we can direct you and answer you directly that way. And then you can always follow us on our <laughs> Instagram, RPI Admissions. We do take over Tuesdays, uh, which is where like a student will take it over for like 24 hours, show your day to day, what you're doing every day. We do um, just different live sessions. Instagram posts, there's all kinds of and content on there if you want to learn more about RPI and get in touch with us.